Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me for a cleaning, reorganizing, decluttering with me video. I woke up this morning and I took one look at the house and instantly, I mean, I can feel overwhelmed. We threw Kamari's fourth birthday party over the weekend. I had over a hundred people at my house. I mean, we're kind of in and out all around the house. The house is a mess. I have not done one single thing. And I thought, you know what? Let's just make a video out of it. If you've been feeling anxious or depressed, unorganized, overwhelmed, unmotivated, unproductive, and you want my key tips on how to introduce a little bit more positivity into your life by decluttering, cleaning, and organizing your home, this video is for you. Today's video is all about cleaning, organizing, and decluttering your way to a more fulfilling lifestyle. To me, a fulfilling lifestyle is all about waking up inspired, waking up motivated. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be productive right away, but it does mean that I wake up inspired to tackle any of the tasks that I have to do on a daily basis. As you can see behind me, my living room slash playroom is a complete mess right now. I had so many kids over here playing over the weekend for Kamari's birthday and I haven't cleaned a single thing. But instead of coming out to my home and getting overwhelmed by all of this clutter, I really have systems in place that make organization and cleaning so much easier. So as I walk you through my own personal steps of how to clean, reorganize, and declutter your home, my primary goal from today's video is to help you feel more motivated and inspired by your home and its surroundings instead of feeling burdened by all of the chaos, clutter, and mess. I'll be showing you how quickly it takes me to clean up all of this clutter when you have a system of organization in place. So let's get cleaning. I have two young toddlers and this is probably always what my living room looks like. But you know what, it doesn't really bother me because in five minutes time, I'm going to be cleaning all of this up and that's really all it takes people. If you have young kids like I do, this mess might look like an everyday thing. One of my best tips for corralling all of the clutter, especially in a kid's playroom or your living room, one that lacks storage and built-ins, is to employ vertical bookshelves and all these little cubbies and baskets to corral the mess. I'll start by organizing all of the toys and the clutter in little groups. The furniture pieces go with the furniture pieces. All of the toys go back into their respective bins. You might remember from my living room tour that I have my kids' playroom right smack dab in the middle of my living room as well. So while it could look like a daycare threw up in here, I keep it really organized by color coding all of the kids' toys. Not only does that make cleanup so much faster for me, but it's also so easy for my daughters to put back their toys according to the color and they have no questions as to where each piece goes. I don't keep all of the girls' toys out. I actually cycle them in and out depending on the types of toys that they like to play with at that time. I make it a point to rotate their toys weekly or about every two weeks. So number one, they don't get bored of their toys. And number two, everything still feels like really new, fresh, and exciting. I get it, it is so easy to get totally overwhelmed by all the clutter and the mountain of chores that you have looming in your home. But I always like to keep these three questions in mind when I'm cleaning, organizing, or decluttering the home. Ask yourself these three questions when you are decluttering or reorganizing your home. Number one, do you need it? Need really is subjective. Of course, if you need it, you know you're gonna need it. If you don't need it, you can discard it. You can trash it, you can recycle it, you can donate it, or you can sell it. But in my experience, I just like to donate items. Selling to me actually even takes more effort than obtaining the items. So I like to make a quick, clean break and just donate it. Number two, does the item make your lifestyle, your routines, your habits, your hobbies easier? If it doesn't, of course, that can also go in the get out of my house pile. 
And finally, number three, this is borrowed from Marie Kondo, or some of you may know her as Marie Kondo. It's all about sparking joy. Does the item spark joy? A lot of the times you might be asking, what does that even mean? Like, how do I know if an item sparks joy? To me, it's really simple. You kind of pick the item up, and if you feel as though you need it, you love it, you have to have it, or it simply makes you happy, you can keep it. That could be its primary function in your home. If you still feel like cleaning, reorganizing, or decluttering your home is a total chore, I will clue you in to one of my best kept secrets. It's listening to audiobooks on Audible while I'm tackling any sort of chores in the house. I just find that listening to motivational content, all of these awesome titles on cleaning your home, decluttering your home, tidying up the home, it makes me feel so much more motivated. I love listening to audiobooks like this. Audible is just perfect for my on-the-go lifestyle. I'm so excited to partner with Audible today and share some of my favorite titles that I've just discovered. Today, I'm listening to Decluttering at the Speed of Life by Dana K. White. She talks about decluttering as an act of moving things out of the house that you don't need. What it is not is moving things around from one place to another. Simply removing the item, but not removing the burden. When I'm listening to audiobooks on Audible while I'm tackling all these chores, it just makes me feel so much more productive and so much more intentional with my time. Listening to audiobooks on Audible is so perfect for my on-the-go lifestyle, especially when I'm trying to multitask and seek motivation at the same time. New members can try Audible for free for 30 days. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers, new releases. They have everything from celebrity memoirs to motivation, wellness, fitness, business. The Audible app makes it so easy to listen anytime, anywhere while you're traveling, working out, walking, or doing chores. You decide. Visit audible.com slash julieku or you can text julieku to 500-500 to try Audible for free for 30 days. I'll leave all of the links and details in the description box below. We're going to move over to the laundry area and it's actually one area that I haven't shown you before because it's it's not pretty but i do have a really quick and neat trick to help you hide the clutter and not completely clean it up if this looks like your laundry area you're not alone but i have a really quick and easy fix for you it is just to install curtains or a drapery rod and close that baby up so you don't see the clutter we are moving in to my kitchen now and if your kitchen counters look anything like mine do you will know that it is littered with just so much junk and this is how I keep it all neat and tidy. Keeping your kitchen countertops organized might seem like a never ending battle, especially if you have as many appliances as I do and not enough countertop space. Here are my top designer tips for keeping all of the clutter organized in a small working kitchen. I like to group my appliances First, according to use, and second, according to feng shui principles. If you don't follow feng shui guides, obviously this tip doesn't apply to you. But for me, on the south wall, it's all about fire. I have my toaster and my air fryer on the same wall. I actually also keep my blender on this wall because my husband likes to make his avocado toast alongside his smoothie. So of course, these two go hand in hand. For all of my electronics, I actually have a charging dock that I absolutely love. This makes it so easy to throw all of my kids' iPads, the baby monitor, my phone charging all in one station, and conveniently located in the kitchen since this is the hub of our home. It's flu season, so there's also a little station where I corral all the things that I need for my kids, including tissues, tissue boxes, bandages, diaper rash cream, saline solutions. I mean, if you have young toddlers, I'm pretty sure you have something like this. I also keep this double-decker tear tray to corral all of the loose items. This might be the area where you're putting, you know, really pretty fruits and vegetables, but for me, this is almost like a catch-all for all of those miscellaneous items that I need to reorganize, but I really just don't have the time to. I'm just gonna throw it here for now.
I get a lot of flack for open shelving in the kitchen and I'm going to show you how fast it is for me to put dishes away, especially after I've washed dishes. It's also really easy to host guests here when they can see all of my inventory. No having to ask me where the dishes are, where a glass is. I mean, really, they can just get a glass themselves, get some water, and I don't have to cater to all of my guests all of the time. Even though I do have a dedicated home office space, you might remember that I transformed my former garage into my new home office studio. I also still like to bust out the laptop and work right in the middle of the kitchen, especially if I'm just answering like a really quick email. But this little center can get so cluttered so fast. I love keeping little baskets and trays to help organize my everyday items. Let's talk about under sink organization. I don't have a dedicated pantry in my kitchen, so a lot of the larger, taller, bulkier items go underneath my sink. As you can see, even though there's a whole lot of little things, this is how I keep everything organized. I have all of my smaller items in a metal basket. This metal basket actually comes with a stacking composition. So if you need to stack one on top of the other, you can. But of course, I have my hot water dispenser down here. I've got the garbage disposal. I don't have the height. So what I did instead was flip the wire basket upside down so I could use it as a caddy. This makes it so much easier to pull the items out, especially the smaller items like sponges, and it makes it convenient for me to access any items since I can clearly see everything. That's nice. So we just landed in my primary bathroom and my makeup vanity area. I had repurposed a really old secretary desk as my makeup vanity station, which I absolutely love. I love all the little cubbies. I love that it has little drawers and inserts that I can hide all of these items behind, which of course makes it look a lot neater than it really is. If you have beauty products that you use every day, instead of just leaving them out all over the place, I like to use little trays and little catch-alls to organize and group the items by use and function. I put all of my skincare on this marble tray. I repurposed an indoor planter that I actually purchased on vacation to house all of my hairbrushes. I didn't even go out to purchase these little glass jars. I actually just reused old candle holders as my new makeup brush holder. So before you go out to purchase anything that you need to organize your home, think about the things that you already have in place that could be repurposed. The insides of my cabinets are already pretty organized. I love to keep acrylic bins, especially like this Lazy Susan. It makes it so much easier for me to kind of turn and spin the Lazy Susan around so I can see all of the kids' toiletries and products. If you have deeper cabinets like I do, I love to use stackable acrylic bins so that you can pull the drawers in and out. I've also saved some old beauty boxes and even shoe boxes. I mean, if you have old shoe boxes lying around, use it. There's no need to throw it out, especially when it can be used to organize all of your daily bathroom essentials. What I learned from today's audiobook, Decluttering at the Speed of Life, is that decluttering is all about moving objects out of the house that you do not need. Decluttering does not mean you're moving one item from one place to another. That defeats the entire purpose. You're basically just moving one burden from one room to the other, so you still have that burden. Clutter in a disorganized home is all about mindsets and those emotional challenges that are blocking you from action. I know you've heard the saying before, the only way out is through, and that could not be more true for a cleaner, tidier, and more organized home. When your home is neat and tidy and it's organized and it's clean, you just wake up feeling so motivated and so inspired to tackle life and all of its challenges especially having those systems in place so that you could have a more organized and less chaotic home.
If you like this type of content and you want more motivational clean with me videos, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know what is your number one trick to organizing your home. Share this video with anyone you know who's feeling stuck in a rut and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop on the channel every single Thursday. That's right, we have moved all videos from Tuesdays to Thursdays, so make a mental note of that and I will see you all next week.